Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. When I woke up this morning and I decided to uh, watch the videos that I made last night about uh, is Paul using diatribe, I got to the very end and realized that the final video, the conclusion, part three, was somehow cut short and there's a few minutes on the end that are missing. So uh, I need to correct that now. And uh, anybody who's watched it and reached that point, uh, <laughs> uh, you probably noticed that something was wrong. So here goes. I'm going to try to pick up where I left off last night. Now, we're in a portion now where this could be considered the, the first dialogue of Paul and the false teacher. And Paul is uh, the, the questioner. Then what advantage has the Jew? Or what is the value of circumcision? Much in every way. For in the first place, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some were unfaithful? Uh, will their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Although everyone is a liar, let God be proved true as it is written, so that you may be justified in your words and prevail in your judging. But if our injustice serves to confirm the justice of God, what should we say? That God is unjust to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way. By no means. For then, how could God judge the world? But if through my falsehood, God's truthfulness abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? And, and why not say, as some people slander us by saying that we say, let us do evil so that good may come. Their condemnation is deserved. Now, this final portion is Paul is marshalling the scripture citations uh, uh, before climaxing his argument. What then? Are we any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who has understanding. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. There is no one who shows kindness. There is not even one. Their throats are opened graves. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of vipers is under their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery are in their paths. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. So that is the conclusion of the diatribe, the prosopopoeia. Uh, now, just to sum up the study, uh, I would just urge you that you watch this series from the beginning, carefully consider it all, and perhaps you will come to the conclusion I have that uh, this 
certainly makes these this portion of scriptures make sense in that some of the statements that we find in are not Pauline and yet if you don't think that this is a dialogue between Paul and a false teacher instead if you think that this is a monologue where Paul is stating his views uh, then uh, then you're forced to uh, explain the, the the problem portions where uh, it, it, it would appear that Paul is saying that uh, you're uh, uh, you're justified in God's sight by following the law by your deeds, and that is not Pauline. So to me, uh, after more and more study of this uh, subject. Uh, I have moved farther and farther into the, the, the side that says that, that this is likely the uh, the way the letter was written, the intended understanding of of the letter, and I suspect that this uh, oratorical device, uh, proposia, pro, proso, prosopoesia, <laughs> uh, prosopoesia. Uh, whatever it is, diatribe, uh, it is uh, likely to me that this may be found in uh, other places, not only in Romans, but in other places in, in Paul's letters, and I will be looking for it. So I, I hope that uh, you will watch this with uh, and consider it with an open mind. Um, if you are persuaded that this is correct, uh, I'm glad that it was helpful to you. If you think it's wrong, then please point out to me in what way is it wrong, uh, and then it is your duty to explain the problem portions where Paul seems to be preaching another gospel. So thank you for watching, and bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.